to add a driver to the database, we're going to go into Edit, Database, and then Edit Company Data. Now that you're here, you're going to input the company data, or you can make your own custom profile where you can put all the different subs that you're going to use in the program. For this, we're just going to put in Test. I'm going to choose Manufacturer, although it doesn't matter. Save. And then now that we've done that, when we go in to make a design, you're going to be able to choose what you just made in the company list. And now that you have a company selected, once you're done putting in all the different parameters for your sub, you're actually going to be able to save that subwoofer to the database. If you don't choose a company, you're not going to be able to save the sub for later use. Sometimes it can be confusing when you go to input parameters for your subwoofer. For this demonstration, I'm going to use a subwoofer that I already have in my database. That's my custom profile I was talking about earlier. This is a Sundown ZV5 12 inch dual 2 ohm. When you go into configuration, if you have more than one driver, you're going to want to choose parallel, series, or series parallel for your wiring. If you do choose the right option, it's going to give you accurate resistance information and stuff like that in the parameters section. Although, for modeling purposes and getting a response, the only thing you need to know is that you don't want to choose separate because then it's going to model it as a single subwoofer. In this case, we're only going to do one. And then when it comes to parameters, you're going to always want to choose series if you have a dual voice coil. This is because companies will always wire their coils in series to make the BL look bigger. Hexibase went over this in a video about TS parameters. Highly rec recommend it. Um, but long story short, when you input your parameters, make sure you have dual voice coil on if you have a dual voice coil with series selected and input your parameters on the series side. And make sure you have all green. Maybe a little bit of yellow, but if Basebox sees a problem and it's all red, probably going to want to use a different subwoofer. Now that we have all our information inputted, we're going to go ahead and select a design and go to box, box design. We're going to choose vented for this one, mainly because it's the most popular people are going to want to use a program for. Sealed boxes are pretty easy to design on this, and uh, base box really does struggle making uh, ported boxes, and you're going to see why here in just a second. To start, we're going to lock the VB, and Sundown recommends 2.5 cubic feet for this sub and a tuning of 32 hertz. We're just going to make up some numbers here. Your front is going to be your baffle thickness. So for this, I'm going to choose 1.5 and 0.75 for the sides. Let's make it 15 inches tall, 30 inches wide. And actually, here's another thing you're going to want to know. Probably going to want to switch that to external, at least in the beginning. Okay, so now we can go into damping. Uh, for ported boxes, I don't ever use damping. It takes away from the peak. If you kind of look over here, you can see how choosing heavy really flattens it out, which sometimes is desired. But uh, in SPL applications, you're definitely going to want as much dB as you can possibly get. For vents, most people are going to be making a slot port. So this is kind of where base box really struggles. If you're going to use an arrow port, no problem. Two flared ends, circle, put in your diameter, good to go. But like I said, most people aren't going to be using an arrow port. Most people are going to make a slot port. And this is where base box really isn't optimized to work. So what I do is we have a rectangle for a slot port and now we're going to go to internal and if this is the face this is 13.5 inches internal so if we're going to have a common wall for the side bottom and top we're just going to have one piece of wood going in here and making our port so we're going to make the vent 13.5 oh, inches tall and you can do the math here uh, for how much port area you need. So 
I don't want to get too deep into how to design a box. I want to focus more on how to use the program. But usually the rule of thumb is 16 square inches per cube. So that's 40 square inches. We divide that by 13.5, which is our height, basically three inches. So that's why we're going to use three inches. We're also going to do one flush end. Even if you're going to round off the edges on your port, uh, you don't want to choose one flared end unless you're really going to flare it out. So now we're going to go into interior. So this is where we can fix the problems that Basebox uh, has in ported design. So if we go to box design, you're going to notice that it's saying that the port's not going to fit the box. This is because Basebox thinks that you're going to build the port in four different pieces. So you can see here, vent parts, one top, one bottom, two sides. We're not building our port like that. So not only does Basebox not think it's going to fit, it's not calculating how much volume that's taking up accurately. So that's when we can come in here. And this is really where it matters because if we're not getting the proper net volume after displacements, then the graph that we're looking at is not accurate at all. So for this, I'm going to choose front. And luckily, Sundown gives us the displacement of the sub. You can see here it says 0.3 cubic feet. If we go online, Sundown says it's 0.23 cubic feet. So we can go ahead and hit lock and change that. And then for the port, we can lock it as well. And it doesn't really matter if you lock it, you don't, it's not going to change anything by changing the thickness. But when you go to build it, sometimes it's nice to have the thickness uh, there, especially maybe if you're going to have someone design it in 3D uh, in like a CAD program, having all this information accurate uh, helps them design it for you. So we have 39.68 inches inside the box. We're just going to round that off to 40 inches. And so now we can do some math. So if the port is 3 inches wide plus 0.75, we know that the port is 3.75 inches wide and it's 40 inches long inside the box. So if we go here again, So we go 3.75 times 40 times our height, which is 13.5. That's 2,025. Now we're going to divide that by 1,728. That's a cubic foot. That gives us 1.71. We'll go 1.72 or yeah, 1.172, sorry. Okay. So now if we go back to our box design in our vent, we have uh, the actual uh, displacement in, and now base box is accounting for that accordingly. So now you can see our box went from being 15 inches deep to being 17 and a half inches deep. So another problem you're going to run into potentially is 40 inches of port length inside this box is going to be pretty difficult. So we have an inch and a half in the front of the box for the baffle and then 17.5 inches to the back. Well, we're going to need three inches to have the port be three inches. So we have 1.5 uh, plus 17.5. We'll just go back into the calculator. So that's our front to back distance minus the three inches that we're going to need to uh, make the port three inches. So we have 16 inches that we can go from here to here. Now we have 28.5 inches this way. Once again, we have to minus three inches from that. So we're going to clear this. OK, and then we have to actually take off another three inches because the port needs to be uh, as far away from the next wall as it is wide minimum. So that's at least three inches plus 16 
and you can see that we're really only going to be able to use 38.5 inches of port. So this is kind of where you're going to have to do some back and forth. Uh, it's not too bad. So we kind of have two options. We can either make the port uh, not as large, less square square inches, and that's going to shorten up the port. So let's say we make it 2.5. Well, that's going to fit no problem. So the only thing you're going to do when you make the port smaller is you're going to increase the velocity, which can sometimes introduce sound and uh, that you don't want to hear. So wind noise and stuff like that. So in SPL applications, it's not really a big deal. So for this, we're going to stick with 2.5 to make it easy. And 34.13, we can also go here because no one's going to want to make a port that's 34.13 inches. So we're just going to make it 34 inches. And you can see it's going to very slightly change the tuning. Uh, but I've learned that it's much better to just make numbers round off and slightly change than try to, you know, use calipers to get some super accurate measurement. So now that we've made changes, we have to redo our interior uh, displacements and all that. So the vent's only 34 inches now, but only 1.5 or 1.5 inches of that is the baffle. So 33.5 inches is actually inside the box. 0.75 thickness. 2.5 inches wide plus 0.75 is 3.25. Still 13 and a half inches tall. Oh, dang it. Sorry. Oh, and I'm wrong too. 34 minus 1.5 is 32.5. Sorry, guys. One seven two eight. You're gonna to want to memorize that number. 0.825. We're gonna switch that to the proper number. Okay. And now we have an accurate displacement for our port, which is good because now the program knows what we're talking about. You'll notice here, it still thinks that we're gonna build the port with four different pieces. Just ignore that. We're not going to build it in four different pieces. You can also see here now, uh, we can round off these numbers as well. So we lost a little bit of depth because the vent's not taking up as much space. We're just gonna make that an even 16. Like I said, you can see how it's, just barely changing the overall net volume. That's fine. Uh, it very rarely is small, small changes like that actually gonna affect things uh, in a serious way. Okay, so now we're kind of double checking everything. So now that we have all this done, you might wanna add things to the box, braces, stuff like that. Uh, it's usually pretty easy just to add two inch dowels to the box. So you're gonna wanna push new before you actually try to input anything or else it's not gonna save it. So for this, we're just going to say two inch brace. And I usually like to say whether I'm going to put them vertically or horizontally. We're going to put them vertically for this. This is just an example. So we know that's 13.5 inches internal. That's important. So we're going to say that we have a cylinder. It's 13.5 inches tall. It's two inches wide. And let's say we have two of them. And then this is saying that we're subtracting it from the VB, which just means that whatever this number is, as a positive number, is how much we're going to uh, take away from the net volume. So if it's adding or subtracting, if we're adding things to the box, it's always going to subtract from the VB. So let's say we want to add something else. This is a trick I found. So let's say you want to put corner braces inside the box, which just triangular pieces in the corners, which are important and uh, work well. Only thing is base box doesn't have a super good option for triangular braces in the corner. But what you can do is tell the program that you have a square because we cut the square in half, that's two triangular pieces and it makes our life easy. So for every one of these is two corner pieces. So once again, we're gonna say it's 13.5 inches tall. And let's say we want to put in a two inch uh, 
triangle. Now we have the displacement. Let's say we want four of them total, which means two cubes, because we're going to cut them in half. And that's how we're going to get our corner braces. And you can do a whole bunch of cool stuff with this as well. Um, I can go into further detail there. But for this, uh, most people are going to just want to add some bracing and then some corner braces uh, to help with airflow. So at this point, we're basically done. We want to go over everything and just make sure that everything looks right. So the port's 32.5 inches inside the box, 34 inches total, 1.5 inches is the baffle. It's 0.75 inches thick, one piece of wood, and we calculated that it's going to be, take up 0.825 cubic feet. We went on the website and found that the subwoofer takes up 0.23 cubic feet. You also notice that there's these different mounting options, which is going to change your uh, displacement. Really, rear is the only one that, I mean, if it's rear, it's still going to take up the whole displacement. Flush takes up less displacement, and then front is going to take up uh, even less. But for all intensive purposes, it's easier to try and not guess how much less it's displacing by being in front, flush, or rear. So I usually just use the company's uh, advertised displacement. just makes life easy. The vents, we have rectangle, the flush end, 13.5 by 2.5, 34 inches long. You can see that our tuning is going to end up being 32.74. And our overall net volume is uh, 2.396. This is when we can make some changes. Uh, this is why we want to go over everything before we finalize it. So we can go here, and we can bump up the volume a little bit. So. That's maybe a little bit too much, and that's pretty good. And you can see how this is going to change our tuning again. In this case, it's back to where we want it, and everything's looking really good. So at this point, you've designed an entire vented enclosure. We've taken into account uh, all of our different displacements, which, like I said before, is what Basebox is really, really bad at, especially with ported. Um, this is probably where you might have gotten stuck if you tried to model ported. You're all confused. It's telling you it's not going to fit, and you haven't even realized that it isn't accounting for displacement properly. And now you're not actually looking at an accurate graph. Next, we're going to go into understanding the different graphs, uh, or the options in the graphs, and what they mean. All right. So after watching back that clip, I did realize a few things that I want to throw in here. So I mentioned that with the vent being too long, there was two ways to tackle the issue. And I'm going to go into the second one here. So for this, I'm going to copy this design because I want to keep this the way it is because it's kind of our completed design. And we're going to go into the box. And so we found out that 34 inches is a safe number for length. So let's say we really wanted the port to be 3 inches wide to have that 16 square inches per cube. All we're going to do is increase the tuning. So when you're building a box, things to keep in mind is the bigger the port, the longer it's going to have to be to maintain the same tuning. So boxes that have a huge port are going to have to have, uh, or sorry, huge volumes are going to have to have a really long port to have a really low tuning. So for example, if we wanted to switch this to, let's say, 25 hertz, you can see that port gets extremely long. And if we make the port even bigger, it just keeps getting longer. Um, this is when you can kind of start making trade-offs and optimize your box to fit your needs. Uh, and knowing that you're sacrificing either wind noise slash velocity by making the port smaller to shorten it up, or uh, trying to make the port really big and long because you want to have a low tuning. Another thing I wanted to go into real quick is let's say you just want to see how a sub is going to respond. You don't really need to mock up like a complete design. We can go here. We're just going to use the same uh, subwoofer to make it easy. All you need to get a graph is a volume and a tuning. So like I said, if we just want to just play around and just see how a sub's going to react just real quick, we just go like that. And 
boom. We don't have to put in the length or anything like that because in this case, we just want to see how it's going to respond. And now we have a graph. And this graph is going to be the same as this graph uh, because they're based on the same tuning and the same net volume. So it's easier to play around with the volumes, get the graph looking the way you want it, and then go in and actually uh, configure it to fit your certain situation while maintaining those volumes and tunings that you found uh, while you were doing testing. All right, now we're going to get into the different graphs, what they mean, what to look for, stuff like that. So here we have the graph. We can right click on this and say to show the cursor. This will give us some more info. And so this is what's called normalized amplitude. I like to think of this as if you put the box outside in open air, this is what you were going to or what you're going to experience. So like we expect, we have a peak in response around our tuning frequency and below the tuning frequency, we fall off sharply with a smooth roll off after the tuning frequency. So here's where we can go in what's called customized or custom amplitude. Uh, I use this more so when I'm trying to compare two different boxes. So let's say I have a vehicle and I have two different types of boxes or uh, two different configurations. Maybe one has less subs, one has more subs, whatever. This is where you can kind of compare two different designs and see how they stack up head to head. So uh, just as an example, I'm going to open up some designs real quick. So this is actually the design uh, that you guys saw in the beginning of the video. There we go. And so this is a sixth order that I designed for the same vehicle. So only thing is, is since six order was a little bit bigger because it had more port displacement, I can only fit three subs in this box. So when we plot the boxes in the normalized amplitude, you can see how if I was just going off of this graph, this sixth order looks better uh, than this fourth order. Only problem is, is because we have four subs here, we have more cone area, which is going to give us a higher SPL. And not only that, uh, the four subs are going to be able to handle more power just because it has more subs to uh, divvy the power out. So we go into customize amplitude. You can already see what I'm talking about. Uh, this setup would have 12,000 watts going to it. So put in 12,000. Also, you're going to want to click on the graph afterwards. I don't know why, but if you push enter, it's going to shut everything down. And if you haven't saved what you've done, you're going to be really sad. Uh, and of course, you can't see it. We can go into scale and go to expanded. Sometimes that helps. In this case, uh, we're still not able to see it, so I'm actually just going to drop that down a little bit. Uh, we'll just go 5,000. Still too much. We'll just go 2,500 then. So, whole point is you can see here. Even though it looks better here, once we go into here, you can see that the fourth order with four subs is actually going to be louder than the sixth order with three subs uh, for more of the frequency range. So uh, this is like I said, this is where this graph comes in handy uh, when you're trying to make decisions about what to actually use in your car. Uh, maximum acoustic power, uh, it's not really too helpful. Sometimes it can give you a rough idea of how much SPL you're going to have, uh, but base box is never going to be accurate at telling you uh, how much SPL you're going to have inside the car. So, but even if we go here, so this is the fourth order, and I can tell you that it hits. Actually, that's pretty close. <laughs> uh, that's pretty close to what it can do at 42 hertz. Uh, but at 20 hertz, it's definitely way, 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 way louder than that. So uh, this truck with this box hits uh, 155.6 at 20 hertz. So like I said, this graph is not super helpful. Maximum electric input power, once again, not super helpful. It basically is just telling you, hey, 
after the tuning frequency, you're going to want to stop putting as much power to it, which is why we have subsonic filters and stuff like that. Cone displacement is extremely important. So uh, for these designs, you know, I, I want to put 12,000 watts to these specific designs. So I want to make sure that my sub can actually handle that. Just because a sub has an RMS of 1,000 watts doesn't mean it's actually going to be able to handle 1,000 watts without bottoming out, which it can ruin your sub fast. So uh, we'll go here. Thankfully, this is one of those graphs where if you go into the expanded option, uh, you usually can see all, all the way up to you know 50 millimeters. So these subs have a 35 millimeter one way. So this box down to 20 hertz, which is all I care about, was you know well able to handle the power I want to give to it. So this is one of the more important graphs because I can't tell you how many times I put in all the information for a sub, and it seems like no matter what I do. Uh, it's just going to run out of X max way before uh, I get to my RMS power. So this is super important. Here's vent velocity. You can kind of see here. So with the six order, it has two ports. I don't want to get into that right now, but I made one of them very, very small on purpose, uh, mainly because I wanted to tune it really low. And if I want to have a really low tuning, we saw before, we're going to have a really long port. So I made it really small so that the port wouldn't be so long and you can see where it kind of fades here and it's basically telling me yo this is going to be really really high velocity which for this build would have been uh, desired and then this is the front port which I made the proper size which uh, isn't uh, as much velocity uh, system impedance doesn't really matter I never use it phase this can be kind of important uh, you want to see a pretty smooth line here if it's not a very smooth line, that tells you that it's probably not going to sound the greatest. Can't explain that too well, but uh, whenever I've had a, one of these lines that looked kind of funky, the sound wasn't the best. You can see how the green line's much more streamlined and the blue one's kind of more wavy. Uh, that tells me that this is not going to be as responsive, not going to be as tight and punchy and stuff like that. Uh, similarly, group delay is kind of the same thing. So if you have really high group delay, that's indicating that you're going to have a kind of a sloppy response, uh, not very tight and punchy. Uh, you know, hear about ported versus sealed stuff like that. So these graphs kind of help you know if, if this is going to be a tight responsive system or if it's going to kind of be sloppy. So we'll go into cabin gain real quick. So for these ones, we already have cabin gain enabled. The uh, This is for a really small Ford Ranger. So me personally when i'm dealing with really small vehicles or let's say it's like a walled build i do 50 hertz uh for my uh, gain or cabin gain if i'm in like an suv or a trunk i usually go to 40 hertz uh, which is like i said just my estimation it seems to give me a graph that seems to relate to real life more accurately and i do 40 for bigger cars just because they have a larger area for the wave to be inside of so you're going to start to experience cabin gain later, whereas with you know really uh, choked off cars, cars that are only up to the B pillar, you know small trucks, they don't have a lot of area, so they're going to start cabin gaining sooner.